tourism is down 70 percent. 70 percent. Exactly. So it's actually Europe has taken a huge beating in terms of visits to tourist sites. But I don't blame people for not wanting to go. For, I tried to go into the um, Notre Dame Cathedral on Christmas Day shortly after the second attack. And I waited for over an hour and a half. This is usually a church that you can walk into, but instead you're queuing up like you're going into an airport, you're opening up your bag and letting people look in. Same with the Roman Forum. You can usually walk through the forum after buying a ticket. Instead, you're lining up and they're searching you like you're going into an airport. Who wants to go on vacation and spend their entire time in lines to see beautiful historical sites that were once accessible? You know, you've been critical and <laughs> others have been critical of the police in Europe, especially in Belgium, right. that they're reactionary. They're not proactive. They're not exactly. doing enough before something happens to prevent it. Exactly. It's been a few months since we've had anything big, thank God. Mm -hmm. Have they gotten any better? Are they being more proactive? It's really hard to tell. I mean, counterintelligence and it, counterintelligence is the key for dealing with terrorism, especially in these countries where you have terrorist cells that are communicating between Belgium and France. But are they working together? Are the Belgians speaking to the French who are speaking to the German? Well, it's always a funny thing when you're trying to get two different governments to work together. They have their own interests. They have competing interests. And Belgium does not spend that much money on terrorism. They spend $250 million after their first attack. New York alone spends $6 billion in counterterrorism. So you have to understand that this is a small country. They have five parliaments. They're basically in deadlock when it comes to just adjusting anything. But luckily, I know that the United States has been helping with their resources, mm -hmm. the FBI, the CIA, and they've been very helpful to Europe in general. Which w what struck me as odd is to watch the, the enforcement of the burkini against the burkini. So right. for viewers who aren't familiar, there's been a movement among Muslim women when they're on the French beaches to be wearing very long pieces of long bathing suits that cover up the vast majority of their right. body. And then some French towns have actually outlawed them because they run contrary to secularism, which is something that the French deeply believe in. Mm -hmm. I mean, to spend a lot of money combating bathing suits you don't like instead of doing counterintelligence work just it seems crazy. Right. And this is just a backlash from the Nice attacks. I mean, every, people are, are really bruised. They feel like this is the way to show that you attacked us, you attacked our identity. And this is, they shouldn't be spending their time in courts battling a burkini ban. Instead, there should be time spent in figuring out how to create a France where everyone gets along. Well, this is not the, this is not the first bizarre or foolish example of government action. You and I were talking mm -hmm. about how, did you hear about this? Belgium spent a million dollars on a tourism campaign where literally they encouraged people to what? To call, call random pay phones around the country and speak to a Belgian who would pick up the phone who would then tell you, yeah, everything's good here, it no problem. Safe. And what happened a month later, there was a terrorist attack. Who cares? No, but literally, call <laughs> random <laughs> citizens. It's like right. call a pay, pay phone in New York if you can find one. And you, you answer, yeah, it's, everything's great. They set up these Come phone visit. booths. And now they have a new campaign called Proud to be Brussels Sprouts. And they have Brussels Sprouts. But what does that mean? You're trying to attract tourists. What tourists want to hear is this place is safe. We have penetrated all of the terrorist cells, all of the people that are living in Brussels that are going back to Syria regularly. And, you know, so that's what tourists want here. They don't want you to pick up the phone and say, oh, yeah, it looks safe. Yeah, it looks safe on any given day. I live there. But does that mean I feel comfortable taking the, you know, the metro to work? Not really. I, you know, I don't, I don't. Do feel you think about it? Of course I do. I mean, you have to understand that they don't have the same sort of security that we have in the United States. It's a very small country with open borders, borders to Germany, borders to France, and they're all coordinating and they, they don't coordinate well enough. Hey CNBC fans, thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Here you're going to find videos packed with all of the information that you need to be smarter about your finances. You can subscribe by clicking right here and click on all the videos around me or the eye right here to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.